So thankfully we all got through the winter and now it's Easter long weekend and the cherry blossoms trees on my street are blossoming. The cherry blossom flowers. I love the cherry blossom uh, blooming flowers because it's like, um, I don't know if the trees originate in Japan, but it's a big, um, you know, they have kind of like a thing thing in Japan where the, the trees blossom. They start on one side of the island and they go all the way across the other side of the island. And some people follow, follow the, the trees blossoming. Um, so, yeah, I took this little branch off the tree to show you guys the cherry blossoms. This is a piece of western red cedar I found on the beach last week that's dry. I think it would be a good time to do a real simple cut. Well, when I say simple, I mean I've done it lots of times, so it might be simple for me. But I'm just trying, and it's nothing's ever simple. I still have to think and process what I'm doing. But I just, this is hopefully a little example to you that you can get a branch. This is just a branch of a tree. Um, I'm going to carve, I haven't decided how I want to carve the flower on here. But I'm going to carve a flower, a tribute to Chris, to Easter. The Easter bunny. I don't carve bunny, so I figured I'd carve a flower. I'm going to be using the ram. I-Cube Carver. It doesn't flash like this when it's running. This um, this is a micro motor. It spins 45,000 RPMs. It's got brushes. You guys can go to the RAM site. No, I do not friggin' make any money from RAM. I'm not sponsored by them, but I support their products. This is the I-Cube. I believe this is on their site for $180, which is so affordable for the, if you will, if you want to get into carving, it's, it would be an affordable tool. It's way better than the Dremel, that's for sure. It throws a lot less dust, that's for sure. This handpiece throws way less dust than, dust than the Dremel flex shaft does. So if you want to go over to the RAM site, just uh, Google RAM products and uh, then look for the iCube carver. Use the code CARVINGFUSION and you'll save yourself an extra 10%. No, there's nothing in it for me. I don't want anything. I told him that. I've talked to the owner at RAM. So... This is going to be a tea light holder, and I can't friggin' find, I got like a thousand tea lights here, I can't find any, or you could put like a fake plant up here, I might even put like a fake, go to the dollar store and get a fake plant to put up here, but this is what you call a spade bit, and it's funny that um, Rex over there at uh, Woodcarver's Corner, he's just firing up his channel, he just carved a boot, I've always wanted to carve a boot, so I'm going to be following his video with chainsaws, his is chisels and stuff like that but I'm going to use my chainsaw and I'm going to carve the boot the way he said but to hollow out the boot he used one of these spade bits and he said it's always best to, to use this and hollow it out first before you do any carvings because sometimes these pieces these spade bits can get really aggressive and sometimes like when you're drilling in here it, if it could blow the walls out of the piece so it's best to drill it first then do your carving so because if you do your carving and then you go to use this and then the walls blow out on your piece, like say this wall will blow out here. Well, then you got to friggin' think of something else to carve it because you wasted all that time because you carved it and it blew out the walls. So we're going to figure out, um, I don't know if I should do a simple flower. My, and I'll say right now for all the haters and lovers out there, my cherry blossoms always look like dogwoods. Yep, you can see here there's five petals on each cherry blossom thing flower thing so we'll call this a cherry blossom video but it's probably end up looking like a dogwood so like Rex said at his video on his video he talked about this for a minute and I agree with him you know you if you hold this and you're doing this to that and you got the drill in one hand you got this piece in the other hand there's a good chance that this could fly out of your hand and create a friggin' nightmare and this thing spins all over the place. So I got my slippers on, or I got my carving slippers on. I'm going to put this on the floor right here. Okay, come on. All right, I'm going to put this on the floor. I'm going to clamp it between my slippers, and then I'm going to do this. Watch this. All right, so get the thing in there. Friggin'. Okay, i got to find another sitting in my drill bit. All right, so that's done. 
And for if you're going to do the tea light holder things, um, it doesn't need to be too deep. So now, before I do the carving, I'm going to run around. See, you can see here, I can see a crack right here. So I'll go like this. I'll look up here, and the crack continues right there. Follow this crack up here, and then the crack continues up here. So I got to remove this. Uh, maybe I'll try and pop that out with a screwdriver. Sorry, I was just filming like BAP there. BAP, here's a shout out to BAP and I can carve. Shout out number three. Slow down the camera work when you're filming, BAP. Love your videos. Slow it down. And it just tells me that sometimes I myself need to slow down my camera filming too. So let's learn from each other here, everybody. That's what this channel is about. Learn from each other. Don't shit your... Okay, so I'll tell you what. I'm going to clean up the whole outside of this wood. I just think it would be a nicer, because this is some lady's going to buy this or have it. It'll be a nice tabletop piece. It's always good to make sure your piece sits flat before you do any carving too. Like sometimes I hollow out down here. So like I'll hollow out in the middle. So you just have the outside of the, the thing thing. So it doesn't, because it, it might be higher here. It's just easy to hollow out the friggin' metal and it will sit flatter. Yep. <laughs> Hi, Lace. There you go. There's a shout out for you, Lace, if you're watching this. So, like I said, this is for the very beginning carver. Um, man, I, I, I end up talking so much, but I'm not going to use this to clean up the outside because I got this. This is a quarter inch, right? This is this is like the, the mighty warship, this tool that I got here. You guys helped me buy it. This is the micro motor too that spends 50,000 RPMs and it holds a quarter inch bits. And this is the tugboat. So this is the bigger one, more expensive one. But this is the one that I suggest to all of you that you can get it. Because if you look at a Dremel 4000, which I use, and the Dremel flex shaft, you're looking at about $150. That's without tax. So this is $180. I suggest to spend the save save up for another month or two whatever you got to and get yourself one of these absolutely this thing is like friggin like there's a show just carved rob this thing is like carving with friggin banana cream pie cake oh yes it is everybody loves banana cream pie i mean i mean coconut cream pie or both are good i got the best neighbors look what lauren's wife just brought me over my favorite chocolate look at all these chocolates i'm gonna eat them all tonight and probably right now too yep <laughs> Okay, so I even did some sanding on this. So you see those lines there? That would be edge grain. So I definitely know, like if I'm, I'm not going to try and explain it, but if I carve right here, that would be a little bit of face grain, but it mostly turns into edge grain. So this edge grain goes that way. So those lines go all the th way, th all the way through the wood that way. But if I carve it this way, it will be face grain. Actually, if I curve it, yeah, this one's kind of messed up, so I won't even explain it. But sometimes for me, I like to, I love different colors in wood. It's it's almost more exciting than carving the wood itself. Look, I see an unhappy face on those there. Um, the different colors in the wood is always kind of more exciting it, than carving itself. Like you would, or you guys, lots of you have that um, juniper wood, that eastern, they call it eastern cedar but you get the whites in the wood and stuff like that. Um, good friend and subscriber now, Lance, he uses lots of the colors in the juniper wood that he gets, the Eastern Red Cedar. Um, he sent me that hat that says Carve Deeper. That's the name of his page. So this, I know that where I said that crack there was, I don't know how well you guys can see, but you see that crack there, the color change. So where my thumb is, there's a little bit of the water wood left on this cedar. So the darker part would be the hardwood of the cedar. This is Western Red Cedar, if I didn't say it. And this white wood, whiter wood, would be the water wood. And if you look up here, you can see it too. All right. So yeah, carving this way, if you look at the grain up here, you guys take the time to learn your wood. And this is first growth, by the way. It's got super tight grain. Just because you see those different colors in the wood doesn't mean that that's not the grain. There's blood, trust me. Look at the grain in there. You can see those lines through my cut marks. It's super tight grain. So, you know, sometimes even if you don't know, say you want to put a, if you're thinking you want to put a finish on this piece, but you don't know what it's going to look, look like. Before you carve it, 
get some water and hit it with the water. So, there we go. Now, that just showed me that this water wood, after I put a clear coat on it, is not going to stick out much more than the dark wood. Okay, you can see it's lighter here. And give it a few minutes, let the water soak in. You're going to see it dry out really quick. But the, the longer you can let it sit when it's wet, the darker it will get. And that's what this is what the clear finish will look like. Pretty close anyway. So that's another tip for you guys. And I'm just letting you guys, I kind of, when I'm thinking, I kind of speak out loud when I'm making these videos. I don't rehearse anything. Um, I don't. I don't have like a list of things I need to say and do. I, I don't like sometimes I might make one or two takes on a certain section when I swear too much, but I'm going to try my best to do a lot less swearing on this channel because things are changing in the world and um, it's better if you, well, just, it's just better if you don't swear as much, but still shit. I'm going to swear sometimes. Just uh, got a heat gun here. Going to use it, dry this wood off so I can draw on the flower. It's getting late in the day for me, so I don't think I'm going to do like um, too much carving this. I might carve a basic flower, but I'll show you guys how I draw it on and carve it if you don't know how to do it already. Anyways. Okay, so when I was doing my painting and stuff like that, I'm the terrible drawer. There's videos how to draw on um, cherry blossoms. I think I can kind of remember, but I kind of can't. Where do you want to put it on the piece? I'm just going to kind of go like this. And then, so you got to remember, there's five petals. Um, so how did it go? It, um, I know that you'd go like this for a dogwood just to get four petals. But um, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five. So you try and make them all equal. So i got to move this one over again. And whatever. You can see how much of a shitty drawer that I am. But let me get now, since I kind of got that on there a bit, let me get a black pet. Fuck, I should have started off with this. Shit, pardon me. Well, yeah, anyways, I should have started with this thinner black pen. So, but let's go like this. Then we'll go one, two, three, four, five. All the petals aren't going to be the same on this. My, I can't friggin' carve cherry blossoms. I can't even friggin' draw them on. So then you go bring it out like this, and they have that little lip in there. See that? You know, and my flowers are always, I always carve them in a lot deeper than I wanted to. You could even just get a piece of wood like this and um, make a beautiful painting on it, or you could wood burn it. I know, uh, active member in the community. I am Amy Joe, and it's going to be your birthday on the 9th, so happy birthday. Amy Joe is good at um, wood burning, playography, whatever it's called. Happy birthday, Amy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Dear, dear Amy. Well, I can't call her dear. She's married. She's got a great husband. Okay, so here we go. There's friggin' cherry blossom. Trust me, it's not going to look like this when I'm done it. It's going to look like a dogwood. But you can see here this petal. The If you get a transfer, if you get print one off the computer, you get transfer paper, transfer it on, you can make your thing perfect. You do not need to give this lots of depth. You can you can just paint it on like I said um, okay so but like when I'm going to start carving I'm going to say this now so you guys don't have to hear the fan this is a noise reduction mic I use but I usually you know if you if you carve not too deep on the outside of this line then you're you can do it really simple with just like carve it like that much a little bit and re, like so do a start cut pretend it's with a knife do a start cut just a little bit in there and then remove a little bit of the wood and then it's an easy carving um so let's just get this how about i stop talking and start carving shoot okay so here's this um the iCube carver i'm going to turn it up to about ah uh, let's just go full blast forty-five thousand rpms full throttle green wiener now let's turn it down to uh 40 I suggest anybody 
that if, if you're going to get one of these, um, get the one with the when the it comes with the foot pedal. It acts as on and off, and I think the foot pedal might even be speed control. This doesn't keep flashing when you're running it. Um, and because now you're going to see me, I'm, I have to turn this on and off with my finger to start this. Let's see here. Watch. See? So I have to, I can't use a foot pedal, which I love to do. So um, you guys see... I've made a video about these cheap Chinese cutters, heating them up and dipping them in the oil. So this is one of this. I, I call it a three-point cutter. And I'm going to go around all the outside of these lines. Re cut. I don't want to cut too deep, but I know I always do. And then I'm going to remove, then I'm going to change burrs. And after I use this one, in case you guys can't hear me when the fan's going, and I might speed it up a little bit, then I'm going to use this Cutsaw Taper Burr here, all right, to remove the wood behind it. Then I can put in some leaves or I can do some lines or it's an open field. Art is just an experiment. Everything, even for the pros, man, it's all an experiment. Okay, so you guys can see I got those cuts in there. Now I'm going to change the uh, burr out. It's easy. You just turn this middle part of the handle, and it releases the burr. And you put your new burr in. I showed you guys which burr it is. Guys, if you want to get this cuts all site, just go to the description below. It'll take you to the cuts all site. Lock it up, and it's tight in there. So now I'm going to start um, removing wood. Man, I missed my foot pedal with this. I got to get an extra one. Come on, and start removing wood behind this flower to make the flower elevate. And when I'm using this burr, I'm trying to do an undercut underneath the petals too to get some shadows. And I'm not just going to do a flower on this piece. I'm going to do something else too. And I'll, when I'm carving this part out, I'm thinking about what else I'm going to do on this, on this piece. See how I'm removing the wood slowly around it? Come on, Joy, let's get let's get back on track here. Okay, so Okay, so there's my flower elevated off the piece now. Now I'm going to go along and do some quick undercuts. 
doing these undercuts is how you can give your um, flower some movement too. If you don't want it to be just so flat. Okay, so now I'm going to round off this bowl in here. Now I'm going to start rounding. See, those flower, these flower petals need to sink into the ball. So I'm just going to start curving them down a bit. Kind of round that ball a little bit more. So I think at this point of the carving is where I want to try and make sure all the pen mark is off of the flower petals. And just kind of shaping the petals and So this petal here, you can see this one's longer, and this one here is shorter, but you see right there where I got my bit? It looks like it's tucked underneath this petal. This petal is tucked underneath this petal. So what I'm going to do is with this petal is cut it a bit deeper along the side of this petal where my thumb is tapping, so it looks like it's underneath the petal and coming out. I'll do it close to the camera. See that so where's another example um, so I just took that little bit of wood there now that pedals tucked underneath that pedal and same with this corner here and I just remove a little bit more wood on this pedal to make it look more just think natural how, how it naturally would work and same with this point here this one this pedal here looks like it's tucked underneath this pedal right there so I'm just going to cut it a little bit deeper there okay so I'm going to clean up around here off offline like not filming and then we'll figure out what else we're going to do but that's how easy it is to see how the undercuts make your shadows come out and stuff so I'll be back Okay, so I quickly cleaned up outside here. I carved deeper underneath the pedal, but I'm gonna show you guys too another thing that I do, and this is just all my opinion and my style. So you can see here, you're starting to get some movement there. The pedal, the, the pedals are coming down this way, and now I'm gonna recut that the center part in. So I got that center part recut in there. So now I'm gonna just kind of make it round again in there like a ball. And it's just about having fun what you're doing, because right now I'm kind of enjoying this. It's it's um it's fairly basic. So now I can round the pedals down more into that ball.
See that? Now the, the petals are somewhat rounded. So this, this video is basically about carving a flower for Easter. So I'm not going to really talk too much about what I do around here on the outside of it, but I'm going to do kind of what I do. Let me turn this off, turn the fan off, and I'll draw it on and just kind of, this is my style. I kind of base it on, my favorite art in the world is the old Japanese art, <laughs> so I'm going to kind of base it around that. Stand by, need to have a sip of coffee. Okay, so maybe it's a bit quieter now. So there you can see the flower coming off the piece. This uh, white wood here. Um, I might just get rid of this whole top piece. This is the water wood. And same down here. So, But this flower is actually water wood. You can see it getting a different color behind it because you carve deeper. So I think, um, let me find a decent black pen. Struggle of my life finding um, pens. So I think what I'm going to do is my carving fusion kind of like, I'm just going to bring lines out of here. Um, it would be good to start off with a pencil, but I'm, I think what I'm going to do is kind of uh, just have fun and carve. Like I say on lots of my videos, my favorite carvings are just doing like nice smooth lines and transitions. But also what I'm going to do, the smooth lines and transitions like coming out from the flower. I'm going to put some um, blossoms in there. So, like, you got to think of, if you look at the old Japanese art, the blossoms would be like, um, let me get a piece of paper here. So, you think of it as a, e uh, sorry, a petal, I meant to say. You think of it as a windy day, and these petals are blowing away in the wind, like right here. Here's a, a petal that fell off. It's folded in half, but let's see. Here's another one. On the windy day, the petals are starting to fall right so the petals you can make them so many different ways you can make them just look like normal petals right and then you you turn them different ways so there would be like a normal petal blowing in the wind you can make them you can give them make them go like that you can do anything right you can spend more time you can make them really nice which i don't but the, so there will be petals falling from the cherry blossom tree all around this piece here so what I'll do and this it, carving the petals into it besides the wind creates a lot more work for me because then I got to do the wind and slope it and then make sure the petal is carved out of the wind so like I'm gonna do stuff like this just give it some nice um, character caricature could be anything you guys want to do just have fun and enjoy what you're doing right so but when so like for example i got a nice big piece here i'm gonna put a pedal in there now i have to carve all around this pedal so this pedal sticks out then i gotta carve these lines and slope all the wood and stuff like that if that makes sense to you it's, it creates a lot more work putting those pedals in there but if you're having fun Go for it. It's what it's about. Experiment. Learn new things. Challenge yourself. So that comes off there like that. Then I can bring it off here again like that. You know? You know, you can set up, you can set up this flower so you can paint it or do anything you want to do. I just like seeing um, very the very beginning. I just like seeing people doing art. So I'm gonna car. I'm gonna. I'm gonna kind of carve all this in, and if there's anything that I think I should stop and talk about that might be able to give you guys tips. Oh, oh I need to put some more cherry blossoms in here. I mean petals. So one, two, odd numbers. So let's try and get three. So let's try and we'll, like these lines are just lines. So we got one, two, three petals here. Um, I think maybe we'll even put, 
one down here too. I know art goes in odd numbers, but pff, there's no rule of art for me, that's for sure. I'm going to carve all this in. If there's anything I think um, I need to talk about that can give you guys hints of things, um, I'll stop and talk about it. So that's what we got. This stuff here gives me, it just makes me relax blending it in together. Think about things, think about your past life, think about what's come for the future. And so, excuse me, the petal, the blossoms, the petals, they've kind of blended into the carving after I've sanded them. They're so one, two, three and the four fourth ones really blended in where is it it's there somewhere there it is four so it could be done at this point you could put a clear finish on it you do not have to put any finish on it but this channel is for the beginning carvers and i think there's possibly a way to make it better i'm going to use this cheap amazon wood burner it's in my amazon store and I'm going to wood burn around these flower petals. And when I'm carving for these videos, there's always a good chance of a fail for me to fail on this. After I put the, the amount of time, I probably spent, I think, maybe two hours on this. Um, doing the wood burning around here is going to separate the petals from the carving itself. If I had a little butane torch, I'd torch in the dark spots and height. I mean, if I had gas, if I had butane for the torch, I'd burn inside here and sand the high points, but I don't. So what I want to do to separate these petals is wood burn around them just a little bit, creating like a little ditch, like just Carve Rob says, because I'm going to paint this flower too. I'm not going to, I'm just going to, paint it. So wood burn around these petals. I don't need to film. Lots of you guys do have a wood burner. If you do not have a wood burner, I suggest you get one because it will really upgrade your game when you're doing wood carving. Yep. I like this one because it's got the big thick handle and I, when I fire up this wood, this wood burner thing here, I do full throttle. I crank it up max. I don't have time to waste. We got to friggin' get it burnt. We got to get it done. Okay. So one, two, three, Where's that one hidden? Four. So I decided I want to paint this flower purple. So I'm going to pull out some dollar store cheap purple paint if I have some. One-eyed purple people paint and um, paint this flower. And I think I'm going to paint the middle yellow. You guys can paint your flowers whatever um, color you want to. So let's look in the paint drawer. Let's see if we got any purple paint here. Well, we got some red. Red's my favorite. Red and black's my favorite color. So... Here we got this blue here. Maybe I'll mix this blue and the red, and that's how you'll get purple. Okay, so you got the paint. Now you need a brush. Found it. Okay. Do I like it? Yes. Do I love it? No. How am I going to correct that? I'm going to burn it a bit with a torch, propane.
So here's the thing. If I make mistakes on this video, on these videos, I'm completely fine with it. Because then, then that way, when I'm learning from my mistakes, you guys can learn from my mistakes too. I liked it before I painted the flower, before I did anything to it. I liked it better. It was more, um, there's a friggin' name for it. Eloquent, might be. we might want to say eloquent if that's the word. But this is still a Geordie piece. So when I do something, I'm not happy that I put the clear coat on it, and I burnt it and painted the flower. I'm Like, I don't hate it. I don't love it. I don't hate it. But I'm not happy about it. If I, if I wasn't happy about it, or even if I was happy with the boat and I didn't like it. <laughs> Anyways, whenever I do something that I wish I didn't do, I always try and do something else. So let's finish this video off with something else. So as I was downstairs refrying my yesterday's pierogies and put some onions in it today, my, do my doorbell rang. Hmm, who's at the door? This white box was at the door. Hello. What was inside the white door box? It's great to have great neighbors. These neighbors that dropped this off me own, own a bakery. You got some thing, sausage rolls here. You got some meat things here. You got some other things here. I'm a lucky guy. I wish it was Easter every day. Don't you guys? And girls. And whatever you want to be. Do you know what? <laughs> Do you know what I like to carry with my spoon? Ice cream. Yep, love ice cream. Curve it with your spoon. Crystals. You know how many crystals I got? I got crystals. I got about 10,000, probably about 20,000 the type of amount of this crystals here. So there we go. Put some moss up there. Put a couple crystals up there. Epoxied them in. You know, for the people that are thinking right now, that's not a very good idea, Jordy. They're putting the moss up on there. You might catch your house on fire. Well, here's a super loud. Ah, shut up. Shut up. I sprayed it with that clear coat like five times. That uh, moss here is basically like plastic now. So, whatever. Whatever. So, let's, uh, let's turn the lights out here. And yeah, the, the light does light up the crystals. Actually, a nice little magical thing there. So special. Um, everybody, going to leave it there. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in, watching this whole video. And the main reason, actually, why I made this video, because I had no plans on making this video, is to say um, happy Easter to everybody. And I hope you guys are um, eating ham or something like that. I don't know if they eat turkey on Easter, but I think Easter is the day that um, Jesus was born. I don't know. Anyways, hope you all have a happy Easter and the little kids and the adults get lots of chocolate because that's what I'm going to be doing all night tonight is eating chocolate. And carving spoon, uh, ice cream with my spoon. I buy these little packs. This is the best ice cream. It's more expensive, but that way, that way I, I don't eat too much ice cream. So I only have two of these every second night or something. I, ice cream is the most fattening stuff out there. Gotta eat lots of it. Get super fat. Yeah, it makes you great.